Good afternoon. Uh, that's a picture of home. And it is my home, and it's your home, and it's everyone's home. If we kind of go back 200,000 years, then the species that we are part of was born here, or in fact probably right where we're standing at this moment, the first humans walked the earth. A hundred thousand years ago, part of our, our brothers and sisters left the continent, and there are those that haven't yet come back, but there are those that have never left and are still here. So we are all Africans. And when we look at Africa, we um, get two pictures. There's the famous low road that we've heard spoken about a lot today. Uh, crime, poverty, famine, despair. And uh, that is the picture that many people have of our continent, of our home. But in the past couple of years, we've heard this mantra of Africa rising. And we hear that of the 10 fastest growing economies in the world at the moment, six of them are in Africa. We in fact heard this morning that lots of them are here in Southern Africa. So we are really in um, a good space in terms of where our continent is going. My concern and my concern for most of my life has been youth, has been young people. I teach at a university, I train young engineers, and I see young people from across the continent who now come to uh, South Africa to study. And there are two visions of youth. There's the, the uh, low road and the high road. If you look at the low road, we tell that of the people in Africa that are unemployed, 60% of them are youth, and youth is between 15 and 24 years old. We um, kind of know that it's a huge problem here in this country. Half our youth in that age group are currently unemployed. We've got this strange phenomenon that happens here in South Africa where 600,000 graduates can't find jobs. So that's the low road of youth. And this low road says that our youth, our young people, are a lost generation. Uh, there are people who shrug this, their um, shoulders and say, well, let's look to the future because we've lost out with our youth. Um, okay, that's the pessimistic view. I think my view is much more positive because Youth is amazing. Working with young people, I'm always amazed at the brightness, at the energy, at the creativity of young people. We are expected in the next 10 to 15 years to be graduating about 12 million young people across Africa in our tertiary institutions. We are blessed with this huge population 75% of the population of Africa in 20 years' time will be youth, will be under 24 years of age. And the pessimism of this population collapse that we hear spoken about in the Northern Hemisphere, in China even, is not going to be the curse that we live with. We've got young, bright people getting education, moving up into the workforce. Our challenge, and really this talk, is about how to create opportunities for our young people. How do we give them a stake in the future? And clearly, obviously, we have to create jobs. We have to grow our continent's economies. We have to create work for these hundreds of millions of young people that are, are appearing and needing jobs on this continent. And we will clearly have to look at those conventional sources of work where we dig things out the ground, where we grow things, where we provide services, where we manufacture. That will be important. Uh, looking forward into the future, I, the technology that's going to under, 
pin all these industries and industries that we haven't even invented yet will be digital technology. So looking into the coming century, digital technology is going to be the name of the game. And we start at three intersecting circles. We can start with hardware. Um, digital hardware, we, uh, we've laughed off computers and laptops now. We're now into tablets and smartphones. We soon will be into wearable devices. It's not long, and it makes me worried, but my bathroom scale will start speaking to my fridge, will send messages to the supermarket, and they'll all conspire to put me on diet without me even knowing it. So that's the kind of internet of things that we're going to move into. And those um, hardware innovations will be coupled with the fact, the simple fact that everything, all the content, all the stuff we deal with is and will increasingly be digital. So be it video, be it audio, be it big data, it will all be digital content. And the glue that's going to hold all of this together is going to be software. So these three circles meet at a sweet spot. And in that sweet spot is the space for digital innovation. And we have to think about how Africa, how the youth of Africa can play in that sweet spot to become innovators. We have to be creators and not users of this new technology. It has to take on an African flavor and serve our needs. Um, how does digital technology innovation happen? Uh, this is my theory, and it's that skills plays a very important part. In digital innovation, we get new stuff, we get new things. And in learning about those new things, we get to dream up ideas on how it could be used in a way that wasn't intended when we got it. And if we're that way inclined, if we're an innovator, we might then form a business model in terms of how we can take this new idea, this new thing, this new way of using something new to the market. And then maybe it will get commercialized and then the loop closes. Because when that loop closes, there's something new out there and that new thing is now going to need new skills which in turn will lead to new ideas. And this is the engine that drives this amazing technological innovation that we've seen over the last 20 or so years. So there are two things about this. The, the first is time. Because the time from an idea to a product out there is now literally or could be literally weeks. We can get new things out there. If you look at apps and app stores, new ideas can be turned into a product that people are buying within a very short period of time. The second interesting thing about this is it's multidisciplinary. It's no longer that the techie drives this whole thing. You need the creatives, you need the entrepreneurs, you need the marketing people to drive this cycle of innovation. Where does it happen? Where does technological innovation happen in our modern world? In the large corporates, in mom and dad's garage? I think the answer is neither. So technological innovation is not going to happen in the large corporates. As, um, 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 as much as they will tell us, we an innovative tech company. Where technology innovation happens is in um, technology hubs. So technology hubs are spaces, integrated spaces, in which a number of things go on. Firstly, co-working. Co-working is a place where people work together in informal ways and chance encounters happen. Um, learning happens in um, the, the um, co-working space and then more formally within classrooms within these technology spaces. We've got maker spaces where hardware innovation happens. Everything, and we're going to hear more about it later, from 3D printing to smart sensors um, to hardware innovation 
is also catered for in the good tech hubs. And then meeting areas, video production or digital content production spaces. And then very importantly, spaces where people eat and drink and get together. So what drives this is three things. It's pizza, it's coffee, and it's bandwidth. You have to have fantastic connectivity to drive te uh, technical innovation. So we've seen across the world an absolute flourishing and flowering of these uh, tech hubs. Um, I've kind of recently been to places like London, the, the um, uh, uh, London's East End, Silicon Roundabout, they call it, is a hotbed for this tech innovation. Um, we've seen it happening in Kenya, Nairobi, across Africa. There are many, many such hubs that are blossoming and growing. But unfortunately, they're not all successful. They're not all churning out the kind of things we would expect them to be churning out. And it really shouldn't matter because we were told in 2005 by um, Thomas Friedman that the world is flat. He said globalization and connectivity has done away with geography. It's no longer a factor. You can have the same things happening in Bangalore or Boston. It can happen anywhere. But a recent book that came out called um, The New Geography of Jobs talks about something else that's been uh, going on, and it's divergence. There are particular areas in the States and elsewhere where you see more innovation happening, more digital stuff going on, more success in the um, digital world. And with that success, all the, the, the uh, complementary professions and jobs also increase. So a place like um, Seattle, coffee shops, culture, uh, wine bars, everything that, that the tech people use is also flourishing. So this book claims that, that we have these brain hubs. And the brain hubs are the places where kind of innovation happens. And there are two things about the brain hubs. They are, are places where people have college degrees, where people have high level skills. And they, they, they foster a culture of innovation. So um, high skills and great innovation. Um, skills, in my mind, are a pipeline. And skills, you, you can't just train pe a person and say, we've got skills. Skills is an ecosystem, and it draws people in at the bottom of the pyramid and then progresses them up the pyramid as they gain more and more skills. And you need less and less of the peak skills and more and more of the, the sort of bottom skills. If you, if, you, if you don't have that engine, you don't really create the deep high level skills that we need. So a quick summary of the things I've said is that, yes, Africa can rise, it will rise. We have to challenge, channel youth energy. We have to become a creator, not a user of uh, digital technology. And it's all going to be based, the successful places will be based on, on an ecosystem that supports skills development and innovation. Technology hubs are hugely important, but they have to be technology hubs in the right place. And where are, where is the right place? Where are the brain hubs in Africa? And at this point, we come back to the start of my story, where man emerged 200,000 years ago, here in Joburg, in this part of the continent, we do have a brains hub. We've got a lot of skilled people, a lot of business. It is a business hub. It is a brains hub. At the heart of it is my university, Wits University, which is one of only two African universities rated in the top 500 universities in the world. So we've got the brains, we've got the intellectual property, we can grow the skills. We've uh, got a skills pipeline, so my center at WITS is growing skills in this pipeline. We are building a technology hub in Bramfontein. Bramfontein's become the coolest place on earth, and we're building a tech hub in Bramfontein. It covers half a city block. It's called the Tsimolohong Precinct, long word, tongue twister, 
but it's a, a Tswana word that means a place of new beginnings. Uh, that's what it looks like. It's a nightclub that we're renovating. Uh, and uh, frequently when I show this, there are people that say, oh my God, because they've been there. It was quite a rough place in its day. It's been standing empty a few years. But with the magic wand that my great architect will wave, we'll turn it to look like that from the outside. Iconic. We have to have a great space in Joburg. Uh, there's a courtyard with a swimming pool in it uh, as part of the club. Magic wand will do that to it. Uh, a place, a blank wall with toilets behind it, which will become a coffee shop and a kind of reception area. That's the dance floor of the club. Very cool place. And that will turn into a nice big co-working space. So I'm now ready to light the fuse and we are going to do it and see what our brains hub in Joburg can do. And my, my dream is that a man from a humble or a woman from a humble background will get an idea, will have a place to implement that idea and will go off to change the world. So that's what I'm doing. If you want to join me, please help me, because I, I can't do this single-handedly. We've got to create hundreds of millions of jobs, and we better get started. Thank you.